Right, so what do you do with a motherboard that's 10, 11 years old? This is a socket 775 uh, motherboard uh, with a dual core CPU. Basically almost useless these days. It can barely run Windows 10. Uh, this motherboard I managed to pick up for I think $25 with CPU. Uh, it's the, we'll have a look, it's the G41M Combo meaning that it has DDR3 and DDR2 RAM. Uh, there's nothing special about this at all, but what we are going to do is put a socket 771 server CPU in this and uh, mod the BIOS uh, to allow it. So um, it can be done. It's relatively easy. Uh, you just, it's a little bit fiddly with the BIOS stuff. But uh, really it's not, it's not so hard, so uh, the first thing we need to do is find out what this board can do, what its maximum bus speed is, so we can work out the maximum CPU that we can get for it. Same with memory, and uh, move from there. So the next step is to do a little bit of uh, searching uh, for the Gigabyte uh, BIOSes and, and specs and uh, move from there. And hopefully we can, uh, well put a, uh, a server CPU uh, that's not meant for this board at all in it and give it some new life because most of these just end up in e-waste these days because they just can't do anything, they're just overtaxed. So we'll see, how, see what happens. Okay, so we know what the motherboard is. So I've gone ahead and I've Googled what it is and gone to the Gigabyte website and here it is here. This is the G41M combo board. Uh, and straight away it just brings up the standard details as they always do but the first thing we want to do is go to uh, the specification and straight away we can actually see that the front side bus maximum is 1333 or 1.333 gigahertz so that's important to know because we're going to use that as a maximum baseline for our CPU uh, so the next thing we need to do is find a CPU that actually can do this uh, or a Xeon C CPU that, that can do that uh, as a socket 771. So the next thing is to bring up a wiki list of all the CPUs, 771 CPUs uh, that have that. And here it is here. I've already gone ahead and highlighted the one that I'm using, but there is quite a large list of them. Um, so just scroll through. What you're looking for is obviously the right socket, not 775. Uh, here they are here, 771. Uh, quad core, Keep going down till you find the right one. This is 2.3, 3 gigahertz, different iterations. And we come, we come down to the one that I've chosen, which is a quad core, 3.33 gigahertz. There's the bus there of 1333 with a multiplier of 10. Uh, and it is a Xeon X5470. Now, if the motherboard could go faster, we could, we could have uh, chosen a 1600 uh, bus. We could have gone for a 3.4 uh, gigahertz uh, CPU, would have been nice. But uh, for now, just to be on the safe side, uh, we're going to choose this CPU here, X5470. So back in its heyday, a long time ago, it was actually worth quite a lot of money too. But uh, now they are dirt cheap uh, as they're all redundant CPU. So the X5470 will bring up the details for. So here it is here. And you can see it's a 12 meg cache, 3.33 gigahertz, uh, 1333 bus. Uh, all the respective details about what you need to know about the CPU as a quad core. And the next thing you need to do is buy it. So the cheapest place that you can probably buy it and the most readily available that have the drills uh, in the CPU already, uh, so pre-drilled, is AlliExpress. Um, and here it is here, X5470. I've done a quick search. The first thing that comes up is a socket 775, which we all know it's not right, it's a, it's a socket 771 CPU, uh, and comes up with uh, X5470 for $38 US, which is very cheap. Um, and this is this is what we're after. This is basically, there's obviously going to be a few more in the list, uh, different sellers, cheaper possibly, but you can see that it has the notches pre-done. This will save you a lot of headache buying one of these. So. Here are the usual socket 775 notches and the ones that have been re-drilled top and bottom. So when you go to put this CPU in, it'll be either upside down or slightly 90 degrees. So that's uh, that's what you're after, four notches on the CPU. Uh, so you go ahead and you purchase that one. And once that should take uh, a couple of weeks, I assume normally, uh, to arrive from China, 
Um, you then also need, once you've uh, worked out what CPU you're going to get, you need to make the modifications to your motherboard. Now, this is relatively easy. It's not that tricky. You are going to need two things from their website. First of all, you're going to need the latest BIOS. So go to the BIOS, and for this one, it's iteration F3. So you'd want to go ahead and download that. Once you have that, you've got the most up-to-date BIOS for that um, for that motherboard. That's great. But we need to uh, make some changes. So you're also going to need the utility to upload that. So at BIOS is the uh, is what they use to uh, upload their uh, their latest BIOSes to the motherboard. So grab and download that. You're going to need that. And uh, the next step is probably the trickiest part. And that is adding the new CPU microcode. Now the microcode is basically uh, tells the motherboard how to use that new CPU. Without that coding, it's not gonna understand what the CPU is and it may not boot at all. So the next trick, it is a bit of a tricky part. You're gonna need a few bits and pieces. You're gonna need the program to modify the BIOS and you're going to need the list of, CPU, uh, of, of new CPU microcodes. So dlitter.com has a great uh, do-it-yourself um, uh, site on how to go through. Now each motherboard uh, can come with slight variations of, of um, BIOSes. There's Award, there's Phoenix, there's AMI, there's a bunch of different ones. So I'm not going to go through one for each. Uh, in fact, you should probably just go to this website. It tells you a step-by-step. -step. It's very quick, very simple. I'll put the, the website in the uh, description down the bottom so you can go and follow that. But what you'll need is two things really. You're going to need the program that loads up the BIOS and can alter it, which is called CBROM195. And you're going to need the list of CPUs or new CPUs. And this one's called the Intel Microcode uh, Code List. Uh, it's an executable, but you extract it to the full list. And what you do is you work out which is your CPU you wanna add, and you simply add it to your BIOS and then save it. It's that simple. Once you've then saved your modified BIOS, you upload that uh, or uh, change your BIOS on your motherboard using that at BIOS program, and it's done. Uh, so then when your CPU arrives, you can simply put it in um, uh, into the socket and boot it up and it will recognize it if you've done everything correctly. If you haven't, you might wanna go back to the first steps and try again. You can reflash your BIOS a few times, However, you need to do the steps right. You can brick your motherboard if you do this wrong, if you use the wrong BIOS, if you can do, yeah, it'll brick it. So make sure it is the right BIOS for the right motherboard and it's the right microcode uh, CPU that you're using uh, and you won't have a problem. Um, most of these uh, motherboards these days have a uh, have redundants and failovers and, and second biases anyway, so you should be fine regardless. And, and remember, we're not talking about a lot of money here. We're talking about a, a motherboard that costs a, a couple bucks, a CPU that's going to cost us maybe 30, 40 bucks, and, uh, just, and we're going to put it all together. So now uh, I'm going to uh, mount the, uh, the new CPU that we've got, and we'll move from there. Okay, so we've got our CPU. Uh, here it is here, it's the Socket 771, if you can actually see that properly, Socket 771X5470 CPU. And as you can see, you can see the notches have all been cut out, so there is both the normal Socket 775 and the Socket 771 notches. So this will go in 90 degrees uh, on, this, uh, on this socket, that we'll do now. And... Uh, yeah, it will have it'll be a tight, tight fit, tight squeeze, but it should uh, it should fit in no problems. So we'll see how we go. Line up the new notch holes. Bit of a squeeze to get him in. down the latch. So now you can see the socket 771 is now in a socket 775 motherboard. We didn't have to cut anything or do any damage to anything, it just fits. So it's now a matter of uh, going ahead and uh, powering it on, I guess. We've done the BIOS update, so 
uh, we'll see how we go. I'll put some thermal paste on it and uh, fire it up. The next thing you should see is hopefully a uh, successful post or uh, window screen. Okay, so we've powered it up uh, and I've added uh, some RAM uh, power supply. Uh, the only monitor I could find was a very old uh, monitor that still had an old VGA uh, connector. I've added a, uh, a solid state drive, which this thing would never even heard of back in those days. So uh, I've also updated the drivers, so everything is uh, good to go, and I've gone into Windows. So uh, now that that's recording, um, I'll open up Specy and CPU Z, and so you can see all the cores as well. So you can see here, um, actually, and we want CPU Z as well. Okay, so from here you can see everything that you need to see. So um, you can tell that the uh, Xeon X5470 uh, is installed at uh, 3.33 gigahertz on the uh, on a socket 771. Uh, we've got eight gig of RAM, which is heavily underclocked at the moment, uh, and uh, and a uh, solid state drive. So we've gone from a dual core, um, useless CPU, to a working quad core. Uh, now uh, an actual machine that can be used. Uh, it has DDR3 RAM, uh, 8 gig of it, so it'll run Windows 10 fine. Um, I'm sure Windows 10 is about to do some updates, but that's fine. It's not running too hot yet. We're about to overclock it, so yes, it will. Um, and there you have it. It's uh, completed. So uh, a machine that's gone from uh, useless to, uh, to working. So uh, the next thing to do is uh, what can it run? So our next video will be uh, putting probably a, a bigger video card into it, running Steam and uh, trying to play something like PUBG or something, I, I guess, uh, to see what happens. So uh, click on the other buttons and so on if you want to see uh, uh, the next video, uh, if it's already out. So until then, see ya.